Hi, I am Movie Man. I'm an octopus who reviews movies. And today's review is going to be on... A real or not. So the plot of A Haunting in Venice is... It's the film is set 10 years after the events of Death on the Nile, where Hercule Poirot has now retired from his detective work. Um, uh, he, he attends a Halloween party and then afterwards he attends a seance. However, afterwards a, 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 a person who also attends at the seance is murdered and, and now Poirot has to return to his detective work and, 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 sol and solve the guest's murder. So today I went to see A Haunting in Venice. Now I watched the previous two of Kenneth Branagh's Hercule Poirot adaptations, you know, Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, and I thought they were alright films, but not really amazing. Um. But, uh, yesterday they, they released the third film of his Agatha Christie adaptations, A Haunting in Venice, which is based off the more obscure Poirot story, Halloween Party. So, it's quite interesting that um, this film is actually an adaptation of one of the more obscure Poirot stories. Um... But anyway, so A Haunting in Venice, which is named the film adaptation, I went to see it today and I have to say, I thought this movie was actually quite solid. Um, uh, I think of, of Kenneth Branagh's three Agatha Christie movies, this is the best one, I think. Um, to start things off, um, the cinematography in this film is really good. Um, I have to say, this is a really well shot movie. Um, I think is there's some very there's like like um it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a very well shot movie and um there's like um there's I think there's like some I I, I like you know the dark like this film also has quite a dark enough color palette to it but I think this film is very nice to look at um and um yeah um. Like, obviously this film, of course, <laughs> this movie is called A Haunting in Venice. This film is, of course, shot in Venice, Italy. Hey, that's, that's kind of funny. This is um the third film I've seen this year, which has been set in Italy. The first being... Book Club, the next chapter, back in May. Then we had Threequalizer there just two weeks ago. And now this film is also set in Italy. And yeah, of the three films we've had this year set in Italy, this is the best one. Um, and yeah, there are some really nice shots of Venice and everything. Um, and like... There's even, there's some points where, um, I think they do some, like, really smart things with the cinematography, um, can I describe it, but, um, basically, um, they do, they do it in a way which works really well, um, and, yeah, I, I think it's during these scenes where the cinematography really peaks, um, 
Wow, the cinema is hard for me. This film was very good. Then there's the ending in the movie, and I'll be honest, for the most part, the ending in this film is solid enough. Now, there can be some times where the editing can get a little bit, like, it can get kind of very strange and everything, and it's like, um, again, this is kind of meant to be kind of part of Kenneth Branagh's directorial style, but I don't know if it exactly works all that much, um, but I think the editing in this film is fine enough, um, that, and um, then there's the pace in this movie. Now, of the three films, this is actually the shortest at an hour and 48 minutes. Um, and um, I'm going to be honest, I, I think like um, this, I think this movie, um, it does a very good job with its pace. Um, now... A big issue that he has with Death on the Nile is that, well, the you know, the murder and everything. Um, the murder doesn't actually take place until over halfway through the movie, and you know, it takes a good while for the murder to happen, and so you're just you're left kind of waiting for it, honestly. Um, but, um, but, but however, in this film it's a bit better because, um, in this film, like, now there is a, there is a bit of Bill's up where, you know, um, we're introduced to Poirot, we're introduced to all the other characters, we see the Halloween party taking place before it, um, you know, then we get to the seance and stuff, and, you know, some stuff happens, and then eventually we get the murder, and um, that will give away who the who the murderer's character is for um, who the, the character that gets murdered will give away who it is for um, spoiler reasons, but um, the, at this time. The murder does it doesn't take place until like uh, this time the, it's not that the murder doesn't take place like halfway during the film. This time um it takes place maybe about twenty five thirty minutes in maybe like kind of around the same time the murder in uh, murder on the Orient Express takes place. If I had to guess um and then after the murder takes place, you know the film it it's all kind of. Loads of bills up, or you know, all the characters are suspected, and you know, you're what you're kind of wondering, and um, who the killer is. There were two times during the film where I can feel it's kind of going a little bit by, but honestly, I don't think it was really something which bothered me that much. So, yeah, the pace in this film was quite solid. The score in this film is also quite solid and um, like I think I, I think the music that plays in this film and um, I think it's quite solid enough here's the film a creepy enough atmosphere and I mean, not to mention um the song that plays um like um in the closing credits is really good and it's a really good way to close out the film I think um so yeah I thought the music in this film was quite solid. Um, then we have the character. So, obviously we have Detective Poirot himself. And I thought Poirot was very good in this film. I thought Kenneth Branagh once again did a very solid job um, playing him. And, I, and um, I like how in this film, like, he's retired now and stuff, and I like how um, we see in this film, like, you know, now that he's retired from being a detective, um, you know, he doesn't really care too much about, like, the detective life anymore and stuff, and then, you know, um, when he gets involved in this thing and 
that he kind of has to get right back into and stuff. I thought, you know, I thought I thought the film did it in a rather solid way. Um. So um, and and yeah, you know, so I thought Paro was a very good character in the movie. Um. We have um. A bunch. We have like then we have pretty much all the ro- the other characters who are you know like pretty much all the murder suspects and I won't describe each of them in detail um since since you know, there's a good ton of them but what I will say is that I all, I thought they were all solid enough characters. I didn't think, I didn't think most of them were really that amazing or anything, but. What they were, they were solid enough characters, and I thought the film did a good job giving each of them like their own scenes in the movie, giving them their own time to shine. I didn't feel like there was one character who didn't get enough screen time. I thought all the characters were given an equal amount of screen time. Um. So yeah, I thought um. I know of the three films, this one did the best job when it came to focusing on these characters. If I had to, um, if I had, if I had a fear of this bunch, I, I'd probably go with, um, Tina Fey's character, uh, Ari- Ariadne Oliver, um, well, now, that's because, I think the reason that's because, you know, she gets a lot of focus in the movie, but I thought she was quite a good character, and I thought Tina Fey was very good in the role. Um so, yeah, so the characters in this movie were solid enough. Then there's the plot of this film. Now again I mentioned I like how um Paro is retired in the movie but you know, he get he gets involved in a Halloween party and in a seance and then when the murder happens, you know I like how I I like how it's it's him returning to his detective work and stuff. Um, I like that. I like how it's actually set as a seance. Um, I I think that really um, kind of spices it up, makes it a lot more interesting. Um, kind of gives the film more of a supernatural element to it. Because, like, I think what makes it very interesting is that, you know, when the murder happens, obviously throughout the film you're wondering, like, which of the guests committed the murder. But then you're kind of wondering since, um, you know, it's had a seance where they contacted the dead and everything. It's like, was, it re- was the murder really caused by a person or was it, you know, supernatural? Was it like a ghost or something? Um... I think I think the film does a good job keeping you guessing and not to mention um this film actually does um a good enough job being pretty scary because um now this film is only races twelve A but um for a twelve A movie um I think it's um does a decent a decent enough job with um with its violence and um with how like su- all the supernatural elements and while it's not particularly a very scary movie I think the film it does a good job um when it's when it being very gothic and you know giving it that supernatural feel. And the fact that this movie does a better job at it than The Nun 2, a film which is rated 16s, that is really saying something. Um, no, the plot of this film was very good. Um, I thought it was a very interesting idea for a murder mystery. And um, it really spiced it up, gave the supernatural elements... That was very good. And then as for the narrative structure for this film now you know we kind of um we we get to like focus on all these other well we get to focus on all the characters, you know, we get a bit of focus on Poirot but 
as I mentioned, the song does a good job with um, focusing on all the other characters, kind of giving them their own subplots, and you know, there's also a bit of backstory to in, in, with one of the characters, and basically a tragedy that took place, and I think the film does a very good job, um, like keeping all of them tied together, and um. Yeah, it it never really strays away from any of its subplots. Um, but it doesn't really feel all convoluted and jumbled together either. It does a very good job with all its plots, and um, it all ties up in what's honestly a rather satisfying way. So overall, a haunting in Venice is well, it's not an absolutely amazing film in my opinion. It is a really solid one. Um, like, it did a good job focusing on all of its characters, um, the characters themselves were solid enough, there were some good performances, particularly from Kenneth Branagh and Tina Fey, um, I thought it has, like, it had very good cinematography, it, 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 had, it, had, it had a good enough pace. There was um, it had a very good plot for a murder mystery, I felt. Um, really made it very interesting and spiced it up. Um, and not to mention, it, was a, it, it did a very good job with its supernatural elements. And I, I, I thought that for a 12A, it, it could get a little bit dark and a bit very kind of spooky. So... If you're into kind of supernatural films and murder mysteries, I would I would say that this film is definitely worth a watch. So with that, I'm going to give A Haunting in Venice a 7 out of 10. So with that, I'll see you guys next time and bye.